He's an American businessman, politician and 46th president. As of uh, 2019, Forbes list him as 244 uh, the wealthiest man in the world with a net worth over 3.3 billion dollars. His presidential campaign received unprecedented media coverage and international attention. He is Donald Trump and this is uh, my take on his top 10 rules of success. Before we begin, give me one uh, little favor and smash the like button. Also subscribe on this channel because it's very much uh, useful and free. And uh, leave the comment if you some, find uh, some very motivation in this video to share this with others. Enjoy! What would be one word of advice you would have for an upcoming businessman? For a future businessman? Um, knowledge. Knowledge. But if it's one word. One word is very hard for that, but the word is knowledge. But you get knowledge through experience. One of the things people talk about is luck. And I do believe that people are lucky, and some people are luckier than others. I do believe that. But there's also an expression, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And I can tell you 10 instances where I didn't quit when it was 1990, the world was coming down, the debt markets were to everybody, all of my friends and enemies were going bankrupt, I never did. And the, but try, I mean, the times were actually just terrible. And even today, you look at times and you see what happens and you have to learn. But the word luck is very interesting, but if I didn't work really hard, I probably would not, almost definitely would not be here today. And unless you had me up as a man who at one point was successful, but let's see what a loser looks like. So you have to work hard because it is true. You can develop luck through hard work. Your first book, The Art of the Deal, begins with a, a simple sentence that many people might find hard to understand. You say, I don't do it for the money. Can you explain that? Well, I do it because I love it. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. I have bad days, I have good days, I have days somewhere in the middle. But the end result is I love what I'm doing and I don't do it for the money. And I make money because probably I'm not doing it for the money. I do it and I do it well. I'm the biggest developer in New York. I love building buildings. I have a lot of fun building buildings. The fact is I do it for fun, I do it for game, I do it for sport. I happen to make a lot of money doing it. If I didn't enjoy it, if I didn't really love what I'm doing, I wouldn't be successful, I wouldn't be sitting with you today. And what's the implication of that for someone watching this who wants to create greater wealth? What's the message in that, do you think? Well, the message is you have to love what you do. If you do it for the money alone, it's probably not going to work. I have friends where I tell them, get out of this business, which is a good business, and go into another business, which isn't as good a business, because they like the other business better. They'll do better in a less good business, so to speak, than they will in the better business, because they like it. Going against the tide is great if it works. Now, it doesn't always work, and you really have to be smart to go against the tide because you're going against a lot of smart people. But when you get it right, you'll end up better, whether it's Microsoft or Google. I mean, so many people that have really hit big have gone against the tide. But you have to have great confidence in yourself. You have to be the right person. There are very few people that can pull it off, but when you pull it off, it's great. Same thing in real estate. You go against the tide. People are selling, you're buying, the tide changes. Never, ever give up. Just keep going forward. Never stop. It may seem like you have no chance. It may seem like it's over. Never, ever quit. If you're a quitter, I hope you quit right now and stop watching immediately because you'll never make it. Now, you own these incredible casinos and hotels. Uh, and the towers in New York City are going to build this uh, world's tallest building now in Television City. When is enough enough, or, or will Donald Trump never be satisfied with the, the deal-making and the acquisitions? Well, I'm like a lot of my friends from Houston. I just keep chugging. I mean, all you can do is just keep going. Life is, uh, is sort of a pretty short experience, and you have to maintain some kind of an equilibrium, and, and the way I maintain that is to work, and I enjoy what I do. I love what I do, and I hope I do it well. And so I just keep going forward, Dan, and it's, uh, so far it's paid off. Are you smarter than most people who would call themselves entrepreneurs? Do you work harder? Well, what is the deal with you, anyway? Well, that's an interesting question. I don't know if anyone's ever asked me the question, am I smarter than other people? I think that without a certain innate intelligence and without a certain drive, you're not going to be successful. I have a friend who 
was not successful at all, but was really up and coming. And he had a thing. He would only fly first class. I'm not saying do this because for somebody it right. won't work, but he needed that mentally. Right. He wanted to fly first class because mentally he wanted to think he was the best and that's it. And even though he didn't have much money at the time, this is years ago, he would always fly. I used to criticize him, but it put him in a good state of mind and he yes. became a very, very successful guy. Yes. Very, very successful. Yes. And I o I've always remembered that. He would never fly coach. Right. He would always fly first class even though he didn't have the means to fly. So. Look, it's complicated, but whatever it takes to train right. that. I've always believed in positive thinking. At the same time, I don't want to mislead. I also believe in aspiring, in terms of what you're doing, aspiring to protect against the downside. You can't just be this wonderful guy walking around, everything's positive, because unfortunately, that's not the way the world is. I love to tell people to think about the challenges so that when they do come along, you're ready. Let's suppose that I have a job, but I have the feeling that I want to start my own business. How would I know that I'm the right kind of person for the entrepreneurial life? To me, that's the best question you've asked, and it's also the toughest. Somebody has a family, has a job, they have a nice job, they get X dollars a week, they don't have to worry about very much, it's not going to be great, they're not going to live in Palm Beach, but you know what? They have a job, and it's income coming in. The hardest thing to do, in my opinion, in business, is to leave that job and become an entrepreneur. Because you're risking your wealth, you're risking your family, your health, your family's health. You're really risking a lot. You have to know in your gut whether or not you have it to be an entrepreneur. Can you handle pressure? Can you handle all of the problems that you're gonna be confronted with? And there'll be many, many problems. But the toughest job that somebody has, in my opinion, in business, is to know when to get out of something and when to go in something, because that's a very, very risky proposition. You know, when people ask me about success, I've just started thinking about it over the last couple of years, because I've seen a lot of it. You have to have an ability to handle pressure, because you, no matter how successful you are, I have many, many friends and enemies, a lot of enemies too, I don't care, but they're smart. I have a lot of enemies, and I've watched people, and I've seen it. And people that can handle pressure can be entrepreneurs, can be successful. Now, I have some friends that are really, really smart, but they can't handle pressure. In which case, they should work for somebody, do great, and have a good life. There's nothing wrong with it. Because I almost think that's an instinctive thing, the ability to handle pressure. Now, one of the things I tell people about pressure is, you know what, they said, how do you handle pressure? Who's had more pressure than me? Ay, 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 have I had pressure over the years? And, you know, I mean, I get criticized in my hair, but it's not so bad, and it's real, it's mine. You know it is my real hair. I mean, I get killed. I had an article recently that was so good, it was such a great article, and then he had one line, but he wears the worst hairpiece I've ever seen. I couldn't show the article to anybody, and it's not even true. But you have to have the ability to handle pressure. And if you can't handle pressure, you have to know that about yourself. You have to know that about yourself. So, handle pressure. If you can't, that's okay. But one of the things I tell people about handling pressure is, Remember, because they asked me the question, how do you handle the stress? And you know, somebody actually said, Donald, you're so handsome. Do you believe this? I love this person. <laughs> you're so handsome. How have you stayed so handsome under all this pressure? And I actually thought of it to myself, you have to remember, it doesn't matter. God matters, your family matters. It doesn't matter. And if you say it, I have some people, they say, I've got to be successful. I've got to be. They'll never be successful. It's too crazy. They, they can't think straight. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you that was going crazy, standing up about your success, right? So you've got to handle Look, <laughs> Now he's a little bit more low key. That's very good. I like that. <laughs> We've calmed him down. So you've got to be able, you've got to be able to sort of say to yourself, Nothing matters that much other than the real big deals with family, 
with your faith, etc. People settle for mediocrity for one reason. They're lazy. I've seen it so often. People go into something. They don't want to go that extra step. They know it's not going to be great. It might be good. It might be okay. It's not going to be great. They settle for mediocrity. They're lazy. I have five children, but the three they're in business, and a lot of it's because of the success of The Apprentice, where they go on and people get to know Ivanka and Don and Eric. But a lot of that was early upbringing. I'd always say to them, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. And now I add for Baron, and I, I'd just drive him crazy. I'd say every time they'd leave, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. Repeat after me, and I'd have to repeat. They'd go, Ivanka would go, Dad, will you leave me alone? But I'd drum it into their heads. And you know, you have to get back, you have to get through those artificial barriers. I call them artificial barriers because you can do something about it until it's too late. Once it's in your system, it's very hard to stop. Like, I don't drink, and it's very easy for me not to drink. I tell people, what are you drinking for? What are you drinking for? And they don't even understand what I'm saying. So because how, it's how, so how did you, uh, it, it, it's amazing when people see you, they can't imagine. No, no, no alcohol. Oh, would I be in trouble if I was a drinker? Uh, with no, my no, life? No, 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 no smoking. Yeah, no smoking. Well, I had and a brother, no I had a brother, Fred, who was sadly an alcoholic. A, a serious alcoholic, and he was the best-looking guy you've ever seen. Yeah, he was much older than you. He was much older. He was 10 years older than me, 11 years older than me, and he was as good-looking a guy as you've ever seen. He, were, he had everything going. The best personality. I have, like, a bad personality compared to Fred, but he started drinking, and he also smoked a lot, And but he, he started drinking, and I think it started in college, frankly, but it got progressively worse. And he was really unable to stop. And he'd always tell me, don't you ever drink. So he was much older than me. And it really has an impact, you know, when you have that kind of an age difference. But he'd point, don't you ever drink and don't you ever smoke. He'd add the smoke in it because he smoked and he drank. And it hugely affected his health and hugely affected even his look and his, you know, the whole bearing. And every time he'd see me, he'd say, don't you ever drink and don't you... So... I never drank. I, I mean, I really, when you talk about my father, I learned a lot from my father, but I learned a lot from my brother, Fred. And he set an example. It wasn't maybe the example that people would think, but it really was, in its own way, an example. We met an adorable 10-year-old girl named Megan. Now, Megan was born with brittle bone disease. Hi, Megan. My name's Donald. And you probably don't know me, but I was watching Maury's show the other day, and I must tell you, you really hit me right here. Uh, I think you are so beautiful, and both inside and out. I had a little something, a little gift that I gave to Maury, who's a friend of mine, and a very good golfer. Don't ever play him in golf. He's very, very good, believe me. And I gave him a little gift for you, and I hope you and your mother have a good time with it, and you're very special, and you just keep it up and keep up that attitude. So good luck, and you stay in touch. So... Donald Trump, Donald Trump, he has his name on more buildings in New York City than any other person. And besides that, he is one of the most generous people I know. And he wants you and your mom to have a very special check. And, and when we talk about Donald Trump, when we, he gives out checks, we're not talking chump change here. So, look at that. Do you know how much that's for? Do you get all those zeros right? <laughs> Hi, Donald. Good. I really wanted to say thank you, thank you very much. Bye. I t told him that I thanked him, and he said, well, you're very welcome, and he told me to keep... That was Top 10 Rules of Success by Donald Trump. Uh, if you find this video valued, uh, leave the comment in the comment section below. Also, uh, smash the like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe to this video. And for the end, I hope you're enjoying this video and have a good rest of the day. Bye.